Welcome to uh, the week one lecture for Psychology 8711, I.O. Psychology at Capella University. You know, a lot of times uh, I ask students of I.O. Psychology which they think they'll use the most, descriptive or inferential statistics, quantitative or qualitative uh, methodology. And to be honest with you, the majority of students, they'll answer uh, descriptive and quantitative. But, you know, I really think the answer depends, and it, it, it depends upon your specialty and what you end up doing. And I'm going to make a case that both industrial and organizational psychologists are probably going to use both. Uh, in industrial psychology, um, I agree that quantitative methods uh, are probably used the most, although they're going to use uh, qualitative as well. Uh, they're going to use both descriptive and inferential statistics, for example, in selection and placement. Uh, testing may be a primary area of interest, so if that's the case, measures might include a uh, uh, central tendency regarding test scores to would include frequency distributions, uh, mean, median, and mode. In other words, these are all descriptive statistics. Uh, measures of variance, uh, range, uh, standard deviation. Uh, in test development, they'd be concerned with internal consistency, uh, standard error of measurement. Item analysis would be another an item difficulty and discrimination. Uh, internal consistency requires the use of different formulas uh, depending upon the type of data. So, for example, common measures like the Cronbach Alpha and the KR20 for internal consistency and uh, Cohen's Kappa for internal or inner rater reliability. Um, in organizational psychology, uh, they're also you're also going to use quantitative methods. Uh, uh, for example, I'm often asked to evaluate the effectiveness of programs uh, or the effect of a program on workers. Uh, just to give you an example, I, I once did a project where I was asked to evaluate the effectiveness of uh, having uh, implementing teams. What was the effect on employee satisfaction? And so my design was to establish a baseline measure for satisfaction before the intervention and and uh, collect annual measures and then after the intervention uh, we'd measure again for comparison and we use the job descriptive index, the JDIR, because it had pretty good validity and reliability and we knew comparisons were going to be an important part of the measure. Um, another project I uh, was asked to implement uh, in a unionized organization, the contractual language they had on performance coaching, and then evaluating the effective of coaches over time. So once again, uh, uh, we selected a standardized instrument and um, that had good v validity reliability because we knew we were going to be comparing scores over a period of time. So for work in organizations, I've, I've used a lot of standardized instruments in evaluating programs and training and development uh, also use standardized instruments. So it's an important part of the work. Um, I think Landy and Conti, in, uh, especially in their third edition, they understate the value of qualitative methods. They have a little bit more in the fourth edition. Uh, in my experience, uh, organizations, they often, they have quantitative measures for just about everything. And so a lot of times they'll ask the I.O. psychologists uh, to help evaluate or measure employee attitudes or values regarding programs. And I've found that qualitative data is, is often... Uh, a, a good methodology to use. In other words, we'll conduct interviews and find out uh, the themes uh, and the attitudinal data. Um, also, uh, the organizations still want the data 
to be analyzed in an evidence-based way. So we'll use discipline in uh, the analysis of uh, narrative data the same as we would in quantitative data. Uh, on the industrial side of the equation, uh, uh, selection often involves uh, interviews, both uh, um, structured and unstructured interviews. Uh, I think structured interviews are certainly going to be pre preferred, but oftentimes you're going to end up with uh, narrative data. Um, presentation of data is another big area. This, you know, this could be either quantitative or qualitative, but in particular I think presentation of quantitative data is important and uh, is a consideration for both industrial and organizational psychologists. And you've got to find ways to present the data that's that can be understood by the by your uh, organizational members or your clients. It supports your conclusions and is uh, is interesting uh, uh, f for the clients to see. Um, one example is um, there's a software program, uh, and there's a link in uh, the transcript that uh, it's on an Excel reliability calculator. And <clears throat> it's an easy way um, when you're working with test development uh, to calculate some of these uh, critical scores. And uh, this, this just shows, shows subjects one through six, but certainly you can go well beyond that in an Excel spreadsheet. So uh, uh, this is something you can download. You might find it to be useful. Uh, also, I'd like to say that uh, as you think about uh, IO psychology as a career path and developing competencies, I would encourage you to consider uh, certainly research methodology, both quantitative and qualitative, as part of your competencies. Also, uh, tests and measurements, uh, um, which I've really found to be an instrumental part of my work. And this includes training and development, too. And then uh, statistics. Not only are you going to be working with statistics as a practitioner, but, but uh, when you're doing your research for topics, you're going to need to read uh, journal articles, and you'll need to be able to interpret the, the data that's presented in those articles. Uh, this lecture is meant to uh, go along with um, work in the 21st century by Landon Conti, and you're looking here at a picture of the fourth edition. Thank you.